Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be another Tartaria episode. And we're just going to be having a look at some maps going from 1700 to uh, I think 1874 or something. We're going to have a look how much Tartary changes in just that 170, 180 year period. So, what does it say? A new map of Great Tartary and China with the adjoining parts of Asia taken from the something map of Asia. Can't see that. Uh, it's dedicated to His Highness William Duke of Gloucestershire. First thing we see is the Sea of Tartary. This is uh, this is Great Tartary from the uh, Ice Cape over here on the right down to the Caspian Sea. Uh, Great Tartary at one point, I don't think it does at, at this point, but at one point controlled all of this and and all of this down here the Eastern Ocean. It says Jedo, the ordinary residence at this day of the Emperor of Japan and this which is supposed to supposed by the Europeans to be one island called Nifon uh, makes up the far greatest part of the Empire of Japan. But a lot of interesting names around Great Tartary. I wonder how many of these names still exist today. Probably not a lot of them. But ah, you can see here that this belonging to the Muscovites so Siberia belonging to the Muscovites there so at this point the Muscovites of course coming from around here Moscow so this section just off into Europe and we can also see Little Tartary down here which is Ukraine with Crimea right there and bear in mind that uh, Wikipedia will tell you Great Tartary is, is simply a name for for this bit of land here, so it's the Bulgarians are Tartarians moved from the kingdom of Bulga. So nowadays Bulgaria is in Europe. So it does make you think, doesn't it? Kingdom of Bulga. Next map is 1736 Europe. Sweden there. Um, I just saw, yeah, there's Moscow, St. Petersburg, there. And now, if you, if you have seen the other videos, you'll know that France and St. Petersburg, so with Napoleon and St. Petersburg, it was it Napoleon II, wasn't it? Um, they apparently teamed up to fight Moscow, so to take down Muscovy. To free them from Muscovy. So was that uh, 1812? So like Dagestan and Astrakhan, which all sound like they come straight out of the Elder Scrolls, but yeah, Siberia here. But you can see independent Tartary down here. Yeah, so independent Tartary is right this section here. But it's it's around here. So and I know that it encompasses. Uh, I think it's Afghanistan at one point. Oh, also notice by the way. Uh, part of Africa and it's called Barbary. We'll do more on Barbary at some point. This one is the same book but it's actually Great Tartary so we can see it now. This bit as you can see it says parts unknown um, and it's Chinesian Tartary. So once again parts unknown. They didn't make it that far into the uh, Tartarian territory at that point. Again, parts unknown, and it's it's strange, isn't it? Because you'd think you'd think they'd be sharing maps with each other and stuff. So I can't imagine why parts are unknown um, at this point. In so as you can see here, what does it say? Great Tartary, with the tract of the Muscovite ambassadors' travels from Moscow to Pekin in China. So this is Muscovite, Muscovite Tartary. So. Somebody is going to have to help me get a good chronology on this because it's getting so confusing. So I presume at one point the Muscovites controlled the Tartarians. And then it seems like when Genghis Khan rose up, they, they were independent of Muscovy or maybe controlled Muscovy. I know Tamerlane, it says Tamerlane defeated the Muscovites when they came marching in and then he uh, subjugated them so it's kind of musical chairs isn't it really independent tar tree down here as you can see 
Mongol Tartary down here. So the idea that they're all just Mongols um, seems to be very incorrect. The greatest length of Muscovite Tartary is thought to be about 3,160 miles. The greatest breadth about 1,500 miles. Capital of Siberia is about 700 miles from Moscow. With modern day Russia, you can really see how they've captured all of Tartary. That CIA document that we read out in one episode, that's proving to be quite correct, isn't it? The, the Russians have exterminated all knowledge of this past empire that they've uh, taken over. And today, they are fighting a war over Little Tartary. It's very strange, isn't it? So this is 1736 again, Russia or Muscovy. So this bit is... This is uh, St. Petersburg, Moscow, etc. And then, yeah. So I presume then, this, this bit you can is definitely what we would call Muscovy. And then when they control Tartary, that's Muscovite Tartary. So, correct me if I'm wrong. The Cossacks from over here, which is interesting. But as you can see, Little Tartary, and Blue, and Crimea. So this, uh, this battle going on in Ukraine really has been raging for, for 300 years, if not longer. This is a 1783 Italian map of Little Tartary. And I believe what it says is something like a map of Little Tartary divided into its newly projected territories. That's the one. Got there in the end. And it's for it was for Venice, 1783, some dude made it. So yeah. Map of Little Tartary with its newly projected territories. Yeah, so as you can see here, this is uh, Tartary here. This That's Crimea, right? This would be somewhere Oz, Oxacow. That's probably like Odessa today or something. So this is, uh, this is the Little Tartary as we saw it a second ago. But, interestingly, Interestingly, it includes these extra sections, which I didn't think were considered part of Little Tartary. Because obviously if we go to this map from 50 years before, we have uh, Usimzi Tartary, is that? The F being an S, or am I, again, it might be being dense. But if then, as the Russians have moved east and kind of encapsulated this into Russia itself instead of just its own region. I suppose these regions down here then have sided with Little Tartary perhaps? Because by this next map, as you can see, Little Tartary, it says it's newly projected territories. Newly projected territories. So this sounds, and as we can see here, it says Russia. And that's the Cossack region, isn't it, in, that, in this past picture? You can see Russia or Muscovy has conquered now all of this section. So yeah, it's the Cossacks, unfortunately, seems to have joined the Tartaries, and this bit down here. But as you can see, yeah, so we've got the Tartary. Um, so this bit was Little Tartary before. This bit was Cossacks, which seems to now be part of these Little Tartary projected territories. And um, this section here, which should be where Strachan is. So what's happened there? To 1851, so we've had 80 years now, and this is independent Tartary. You can see the Caspian Sea again there, and here is Tartaria, right there. So, it seems like at this point, Tartaria has been shrunken down into this tiny section here that we saw before. This section here, isn't it, going off this way? Yeah. So, up here is Tartary. It looks very Wild West almost, doesn't it? The Bride Chase, a marriage custom of the Tartary. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of information we learnt today, isn't it? The Bride Chase. Yeah, we shouldn't laugh. So, in Tartaria, it's custom at the wedding for the, 
for the bride to mount a horse and be hunted down by the groom and his family. Right. Um, so this is Russia in Asia. That's Siberia, isn't it? Um, and then Russia in Europe, yep. So as you can see, Russia has taken over Tartary at this point. It's 1851. And Tartaria has become nothing but independent Tartary. But it does have uh, does have a decent section of land. It's got got this bit here. Well, this bit around the Caspian and the Aral Sea going up to uh, the Chinese Empire. But that's independent Tartary, the only thing surviving. Tartars on a journey. Hmm. Where are you going? In 1851, eh? Where are they travelling? But again, do you, do you kind of see what I mean about the the Wild West vibe? So, I think Little Tartary, at this point, has become Little Russia. So, right, the 1865 Flag of All Nations American Encyclopedia. Now this, this is actually quite interesting. It shows that in 1865, the Flags of All Nations, we can see that Tartary was still a, uh, was still a nation. The flag itself is not the owl anymore. And we, we learnt from a different book that the Emperor of Tartary's flag was the griffin. So what that suggests is the Emperor of Tartary, the area of independent Tartary, must be the only surviving remnants of this empire. For them to have adopted the griffin as the flag, that's kind of what, you, what it suggests. So the Emperor must be somewhere in independent Tartary at this point in 1865, still holding out, which is which is crazy because we've been obviously looking at uh, World's Fair exp uh, expositions and stuff like that on this channel. It's interesting because I've, I've not seen Tartary at any of these events and yet it was such a large country at one point. And in fact, we know, for, we know that the Tartarian language itself was very prominent because I don't, if you've seen one of the earlier videos, we have the, the piece about Madame Anna Bishop who sings in uh, six different languages at a performance. And they're all famous, you know, very well-known languages, Italian, German, French, Russian, English, and Tartarian. But the interesting thing that, that I wanted to speak about was this site it says the extent and population of the world. So in 1865, we have a nice 1.3 billion estimated population. Get a feel for the numbers. Great Britain's 30 million. Austria, 35 million. Russia in Europe, 60 million. Prussia, 18 million. Italy, 21 million. Out to Asia. Tartary is listed as having a population of 8 million with a area, square miles, of 806,430. Now, we also saw, uh, I can't remember where it was, but I will find it. It was a, um, it shows that at that time, Tartaria had like a 3 million square miles or something. But that was the Muscovite area, and it showed independent Tartary. What it's um, what it's showing is that independent Tartary is now Tartary. So independent Tartary seems to be the actual country of Tartary itself. We've got the population of the world, distribution of religions and races. We had a little theory, didn't we, that uh, the Tartarians had spread out across uh, at least Canada and Greenland. Tartarians had controlled a section of this at least and fought with the uh, the European colonists. We also believe that Native Americans in this area had associated themselves with the Tartarians. Heathen, which is what all of this is. These are heathens. 1865 heathens, all right? So Greenland heathens, North America heathens, all of bloody Asia heathens, and even Australia, obviously not the bits... Uh, that have been converted by the Protestants, right? So you can see heathen, heathen, heathen. These are Tartarian areas. Population of the world according to religions. We've got Christians are 25%. The Roman Catholics are 50% of that with 170 million. The Protestants are 89 million strong and the Greeks have 76 million. So that's the Greek Christians. The Greek Christians were the ones being assisted in Tamerlane's efforts at Constantinople in the 14th century. Greek Empire. And very interesting about this though is that the Jews, there was only 5 million Jews. Only 5 million Jews in 1865. Now you, don't you find that a little bit weird that there's only 5 million Jews? 
Only 5 million! Can someone enlighten me as to why in 1865 there was only 5 million Jews? I mean, obviously by 1940, it, it, was, it was as much of a problem for Hitler to kick off, wasn't it? Uh, that's very weird. Only, only 5 million Jews. We've got population of the world according to races. And most of the world is listed as being Mo Mongolian. 40% of the world, 522 million are Mongolians. Would kind of suggest a bit of an empire, wouldn't it? The distribution of races in the world. And the Mongolians are covering Asia, Greenland, and Canada. 1872 chart of the world, the Russian Empire is now uh, in control. So this is 1872, including Little Tartary. Empire here, as you can see, going into Siberia. So this is all Russia now. The uh, Chinese Empire then. Persia, Saudi Arabia, but as you can see, Afghanistan still seems to be part of uh, independent Tartary. And the thing is, you got to remember as well, this is, this is uh, almost the cradle of civilization. So now, you, now you're probably understanding why Russia thought they had a right to go and invade Afghanistan in the first place. It was independent Tartary. Taken over Little Tartary at this point, as you can see. L Little Tartary has now become Little Russia. So... It was absorbed into the Russian Empire and then obviously the Soviet Union as Ukraine when it broke free of the USSR and now today is being invaded and attacked by the Russians. So it's interesting, isn't it, that these places are still experiencing war today. Think about Afghanistan uh, and areas around there in the Middle East. Think about Ukraine. How much evidence of this past civilization is really being destroyed in these wars? This is our last, our last map, which is the 1874 hemisphere projection of the world. Spain, France, Austria, you know, it's naming the places. Since 1874, we can still see right there is Tartary. It's interesting. So what you're looking at here is sections of the south of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Af bits of Afghanistan, most of Afghanistan, and um, and the northern parts of Iran. So that is Tartary by 1874. The evolution of Tartary over a 174 year period from the point of view of the maps. Also see we're still calling that Barbary, which is interesting. 1874, Tartary. You know, it's, it's a place. And just remember, what Wikipedia says, that this is um, the name for a tract of land from there to there. From there to there, sorry, from the Caspian Sea to there. That's all that Tartary is a name for. So why is why is it specifically a name for a, for a country there? And like I say, if that's not a country, why has it got a flag? I mean, I know the pirates aren't a country. Pirates also don't have a giant section of land called pirates. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. We'll be back with more stuff for you to see and for us to talk about. But yeah, thank you for checking out.